don't you where you come from As long as you're a black man You're an African Peace, peace, black family. So today's video will be in reference to uh, the new documentary, 1804, The Hidden History of Haiti, uh, produced by Tariq Nasheed and directed by Tariq Nasheed. Now, let me say that I'm a huge consumer of his products. I have all of his DVDs, uh, Hidden Colors 1 through 4. Uh, no bootleg, by the way. I ordered them, and I went to go see 1804 uh, in theaters, and I recently ordered my copy uh, on Amazon, so it should be here sometime in November. Um, now this is going to be kind of like a movie review slash I wish he would have put this in the movie type of thing. So there's a lot of things that he left out about the history of Haiti. Uh, one of the concerns that I do have about the movie is the fact that it was so short. You know, you can't necessarily condense 237 years of history in an hour and 20 minutes. You know, and I understand it. He definitely has his political views on why he did it, and um, and I respect it because I didn't make the documentary he did. I'm just the consumer. Uh, so I appreciate his works, but I'm definitely going to talk about some things that were left out of the documentary. So first and foremost, let me get into this. Uh, let me get into this gentleman right here, General Benito Savan, right? Now, he is arguably, considerably, uh, one of the founding fathers of Pan-Africanism and the ideology of Pan-Africanism. So much so that him and about uh, 5,000 soldiers actually went to Ethiopia to help King Menelik II uh, fight against the Italian soldiers that were trying to invade Ethiopia at the time. So this gentleman is actually considered to be one of the founding fathers of Pan-Africanism. Now, as we already know, uh, Haiti was the only place in the world that was free from colonialism and slavery. And so in the declaration that um, Jean-Jacques Dessalines wrote, he said that any African that makes it to this land will be free from slavery. So uh, Jean-Jacques Dessalines will be one of the founding fathers also of Pan-Africanism because he said we will protect any African that makes it to this land with our soldiers and we protect your freedom so this gentleman here though uh, speaking in modern times actually served in the ethiopian war the war uh that was fought against the italians was in uh, 1896 uh and it was called the adwa ethiopian war uh that took place with uh haitian soldiers and ethiopian soldiers so this gentleman was left out of the movie and i believe that he needs his due respect because he represented african people and haitian people to the core when it came to Pan-Africanism. Now, this here is a statue of uh, Toussaint Le Overture in uh, Benin, right? And they have a celebration, actually, in, in Benin where they celebrate Toussaint because they believe that uh, this is where he was captured from. And so one thing I did learn from the documentary about uh, 1804 that Tariq Nasheed produced is the fact that the life expectancy in um in Haiti was uh, only seven to three years. Now that makes a lot of sense, and that's why uh, uh, the Haitian culture is so Afrocentric. It's so you know uh, domineering when it comes to African culture because the Africans didn't last long on that island. They would die in about three to seven years. Unlike here in America, which not to take anything from the tortures and the horrors and the things that took place of, with Africans here in America, but here in America, the generations would be the mother would come in for Africa, she would have a child, the child would lose the culture, the child would lose the language, and then they would have a child, and it kept on going like that. In Haiti, it was uh, someone would come from Africa, they would die, and they would have to go get more Africans. So that's why the culture in, in Haiti is so you know Afrocentric. The music, the food, you know, it's, I call it Little Africa, you know, because it really is, it really was an African hub and still is an African hub, excuse me. So this is just a little bit uh, of history that Benin, you know, in Africa still celebrates their, their stolen son. You know, they do a celebration of him because he is a true hero, um, Toussaint L'Overture. One thing I did like that Tariq put in the movie is the fact that he was uh, too diplomatic. You know, now this is not a spoiler. He was too diplomatic, um, you know, and he actually didn't get to see freedom because he was too diplomatic and he believed in the French, you know, and he actually died in a French prison in 1803. So he never actually got to see uh, Haiti become independent. Um, now, uh, 
Dessalines was not diplomatic at all with the French. You know, he coined the phrase coupe tête boule caille, which means cut off their heads and burn their houses. Okay? <laughs> and that's what actually led to the liberation of Haiti. Um now to touch uh, slightly on Simin Boulevard in South America, a lot of people don't know that it was actually uh, Haiti uh, that actually sent soldiers to help Simin Boulevard free up South America. So when you see the flag um, Ecuador and you see Colombia and you see Venezuela, their flags have the same patterns, which are blue and red. And that basically is a homage, you know, or a way of showing respect to Haiti. Right, because Haiti's flag now is blue and red, right? That is a way of showing respect to Haiti for helping Simin Boulevard free their countries from the grips of slavery, aka colonialism. Right? So these are some of the things we have to understand how Haiti practiced a sense of Pan Africanism. Remember, the Haitian flag says uh unity is force. And so they 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 pride themselves on going around helping African people out. Haiti was only about thirteen years um out of their situation of slavery when they sent ships and and, 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 and and money and weapons and soldiers to go help South America free themselves from slavery. Only 13 years out of that situation. And, the, and so what we must understand also, just to give a little note on that, Haiti was actually split up into two countries. Okay, it was split up into the North and the South, where you had Henry Christophe, who was running one part, and then you had... Uh, And Alexander Putron, excuse me, that was a brain freeze, wow. You had Henry Christophe and Alexander Putron, who was uh, splitting Haiti in the North and the South regions, right? And so then let's go to how Haiti was influential here in America. Uh, a lot of people don't know that Haiti sent about 5,000 soldiers to help out in the Battle of Savannah. And there's actually a monument in uh, Savannah, Georgia now of the Haitian soldiers that came here to help uh, America at that time fight for their freedom against Britain, okay? And then when, when they received their freedom from Britain, they didn't want to recognize Haiti as a country. After they used up, you know, uh, Haiti for their resources, they shitted on Haiti. Um, so, yeah, you can actually look that up, the Battle of Savannah that took place October 9th, uh, 1779 in Savannah, Georgia, where Haitians came here. Actually, uh, Henry Christophe actually participated as a child in that war. Um, and now let's, let's look at Louisiana for a second and how Haiti affected America's uh, territories, right? So, as we know, America was only 13 colonies at one point. And it was actually the Haitian Revolution that bankrupt France and caused France to sell its portion of America to the 13 colonies. And this is what we have the Louisiana Purchase that took place in uh, 1803, a year before Haiti became independent. So if Haiti never would have revolted or Haitians or Africans would never have revolted uh, and caused France to go into bankruptcy, America will only be half the size it is today because it's because of that revolt that caused uh, France to go bankrupt and sell their shares of America to the 13 colonies and made them uh, spread and go and go west. OK. So now let's also talk about, you know, we're talking about the influence that Haiti, the revolution had on uh, the world, on African people, right? Also, you want to look at um, Durham, Haiti, right, which is actually spelled H-A-Y-T-I, which, uh, which is considerably one of the first black, you know, Wall Streets. Okay, before Black Wall Street in Tulsa, Oklahoma, this was the Black Wall Street. It was so world renowned that you had people like W.E. Du Bois that came to visit it. You have uh, Booger T. Washington who came to visit it, you know, um, and who actually, you know, were inspired. Like, wow, you know, these people are really governing themselves. They had schools, they had libraries, they had uh, hospitals, they had everything that Tulsa, Oklahoma had before Tulsa, Oklahoma. And the reason why this story is so influential is because the, you got to understand that these people would hear stories about a free republic of African people who governed themselves, who ruled themselves. At that time in the world, at that time in the world, you have to understand that no other African nation was free, not from slavery and not from colonialism. And so when these people grew up and they would hear stories about Haiti, 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 it inspired them to do for themselves. 
You know, this is how Haiti inspired them. This is how Haiti gave to them. Same thing with Nat Turner. Nat Turner would hear stories about Haiti, 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 and, you know, uh, Africans are free. And his whole mission, Nat Turner's whole mission was to start the rebellion, steal a ship, and then escape to Haiti. Because, again, Haiti said any African that makes it to these shores, we will protect your freedom with our soldiers and with our lives. You would not ever go back into slavery. OK, this is what was in the Haitian uh, Declaration of Independence. And so a lot of these a lot of times when slaves would travel with their masters and a lot of times when, you know, uh, Europeans would travel throughout the world, rumors were spread about Haiti and, and enslaved Africans would hear about Haiti. Right. And I'm just going to read you something out of W.E. Du Bois book, uh, The Soul of Black Folk. And uh, he talks about that in the book briefly. He says the disappointment. And impatience of the Negroes at the present day situation of slavery and serfdom voiced itself in two movements. The slaves in the South arose undoubtedly by vulgar rumors of the Haitian revolt. It made itself known in three insurrections in the 1800s under Gabriel in Virginia, in 1822 under V.C. in Carolina. And in 1831, again in Virginia, under the terrible Nat Turner. So this just showed you how Haiti and how the revolution inspired other people to, to say, you know what, if these people can be free, then doggone it, we can be free too. And this is in The Soul of Black Folk. W. Du Bois talks about that in his book, how Haiti, you know, influenced other people to want to rebel, to want to raise up against uh, slavery. And one of the reasons why, I'm just going to touch on that for a second, one of the reasons why, you know, excuse me, some of the insurrections weren't successful here in the Americas is because Africans weren't allowed to learn the terrain the way Haitians did or Africans did in Haiti. Because uh, um, in here in America or in the Americas, you had to have a pass to go from one plantation to another plantation. So the slave owners were very keen on not letting you know the terrain, not letting you know your way around. In Haiti, the French were more relaxed. So Africans learned their way around the island. And so what they did is they um, learned a sense of guerrilla warfare. When it was time to revolt, they learned how to hide in the bush and things like that. So it is the fact that the Haitians utilized their African s skills because, again, they were fresh Africans coming from Africa. They kept bringing them from Africa. But here in America, um, it was kind of watered down as the children kept on being born into slavery. The culture was kind of watered down. The warrior mindset was kind of, you know, being watered down, watered down. Opposed to Haiti that, you know, again, fresh Africans kept coming in and these were warriors, these were warrior class men. And so they learned the terrain, uh, you know, uh, very, very fast, you know, because they, they were able to move around the island of Haiti here in America. Not so much. They were, you know, strictly to their plantation and back to their plantation. <laughs> So that's one of the reasons why the Haitian uh, Revolution was successful because they actually drew their enemy in to fight their battle. You have to understand in a war for you, if you don't fight their battle, you make them fight your battle. And so they drew them in. Um, also, okay, so touching back on this, the Haitian Revolution inspired these people to build up, you know, this district, Haiti, in Durham, right, which is still there to this day. And another thing I want to talk on, touch on that uh, was not talked about in the movie is the fact that uh, Frederick Douglass, okay, was actually uh, in the 19th century, he served as the minister to Haiti from uh, 1889 to 1891. And that was not talked about. He actually served as the minister to Haiti because, again, remember, uh, uh, Haiti was, you know, considered the first pan-african movement and so uh frederick Douglass, knowing about haiti wanted to you know do things in haiti and so he did um now touching on let's go to let's see what do we leave off as let's go to the embargoes that uh was placed on haiti right so uh haiti actually after winning his independence had to pay france back um uh, estimated uh one billion dollars right in today's currency and they didn't stop paying that until uh nineteen forty seven uh also haiti was put in uh u s trade debargos right from eighteen o six to two thousand and three 
Nobody would do business or trade with Haiti uh, because European powers and uh, America didn't want Haiti to be successful. They wouldn't acknowledge Haiti as an independent country of African people because, again, you know, if you speak about independence or if you practice a sense of independence, right, as an African person, then what does that do to the institution of slavery? So they had to destroy that country, right? And this is why Ethiopia, who has never been colonized by any European powers, and Haiti is always economically targeted. This is why they have to destroy because Ethiopia was an empire, right? When Haile Selassie was in Ethiopia, Ethiopia was thriving. Ethiopia had its own air airlines. Ethiopia Airlines, I remember, I don't remember because I wasn't born, but I remember seeing photos and videos of Ethiopia thriving economically, right? Haiti, same thing. So Haiti and Ethiopia has a lot in common other than the fact that they helped each other out in wars. But just because they have never been conquered or re-enslaved and European powers have always been trying to destroy them, right? Uh, so we talked we talked about the trade debacles. Um, we talked about uh, the United States occupying Haiti, right? What's so interesting about that is that in um, <clears throat> I believe it was nineteen nineteen fifteen, the president was assassinated in Haiti, and his name I may pronounce it wrong. Vilborn Vilborn Sam was actually assassinated in Haiti by a group of mulattoes. And the president at the time in America was Woodrow Wilson. And he sent the Marines in to uh, Haiti to occupy Haiti. From 1915 to 1934, the United States Marines were in Haiti, stealing, pillaging, robbing, and taking everything out of Haiti. Okay, and destroying the culture, destroying the books. They were there just to do damage to, to Haiti as a free republic. Okay. And actually, from 1915, when that president was assassinated, uh, Vilburn Sam, when he was assassinated, right, you could actually see the lightning of the presidents in Africa. I mean, excuse me, in Haiti. You would see them getting lighter. You would see them getting whiter. You know, in no time before that were there ever any white presidents in Haiti. Now, when America gets there, now you have white presidents running Haiti. You know, so when we're talking about, you know, destruction, you know, America did that. America went to Haiti to purposely sabotage Haiti, right? Um, another thing that he didn't touch on in the, the documentary or not is how Haiti uh, helped out the Dominican Republic. Um, by helping them get free from the Spanish, right? At one point, Haiti actually had the whole island, you know, for themselves. And they, they let the Spanish, you know, keep their culture and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but again, things uh, kind of, you know, went through turmoil and they split and they went their own ways. But, you know, I wanted him to touch more on that in the documentary on how Haiti assisted Dominican Republic in getting their freedom. And then the Dominican Republic called Spain back to the island to rule over them, which was very, very weird. Um, one thing I did appreciate that he touched on is how he touched on how um, voodoo is kind of like demonized in European uh, culture and how they use that to poison our minds about what we consider to be voodoo, right? And so uh, one of the movies that I can that that comes to mind that I think about is the movie um, Serpent, the Serpent and the Rainbow by uh, Wes Craven. Uh, he actually created that movie in 1988, and Wes Craven is a uh, one of the gentlemen that helped produce or he directed the movie um, Nightmare on Elm Street. And this movie basically demonized voodoo. It made, and it was shot in Haiti. This movie was shot in Haiti. And it made voodoo seem like, you know, skulls and bones and, and just a whole bunch of shenanigans. But I like the way he, you know, um, broke that down. How, you know, voodoo is, is often, you know, spun and demonized by Europeans to make Africans not want to relate to our cultural you know, um, religion or our cultural spirituality, you know, it, it makes us feel alienated in, in some way, you know, so, um, <clears throat> to touch on, to touch on that, you know, it's, it's just kind of weird now that we live in a culture where if you say voodoo, people run away from you, and that's because the European influence that has been placed on voodoo, uh, so one thing that he did touch on in documentary is how, 
and I've touched on this in several of you know my videos or lectures um that he touched on uh, which was very appreciative is how influenced um Marcus Garvey was by the Haitian Revolution but just to, just to expound on that for a second uh Marcus Garvey was inspired by the uh Haitian Revolution so was Nat Turner actually the red black and green flag is just a cut off from the Haitian flag because the first flag was Absolutely red and black right. no, no 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 the first flag for the for the that's a whole not <laughs> island they don't want to go there with what the original flag was the, it go come there. from Haiti no. why do you think who do you the think original flag who do you think listen, Garvey listen, dressed listen. up as hold on hold on hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Reggie, 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 Reggie. Two again. shots. Say it again. Bookman was a Jamaican, right? No, I told you about that Jamaican African. stuff, right? He, was an he dressed up like an emperor. I'm going to message you, man. Go ahead. And so, say this, though, hold on. I'll say and if you know your history, uh, the original Haitian flag was actually red and black in the north, and in the south, it was uh, red and blue. And um, the reason it was red and black is because the red was for the people and the black was for the voodoo. Now, um, Marcus Garvey, being a, a studier of history and understanding history and understanding Pan-Africanism, you know, was very inspired by the Haitian Revolution. And so if you look at a, a lot of times how Marcus Garvey dressed up, he dressed up like Dessalin. He dressed up like Toussaint, you know, as an emperor. Um, so, you know, the point I'm trying to make about all this, that the movie was fantastic. I think there should have been some elements where he focused more on Pan-Africanism, on how Haiti was a representation of Pan-Africanism. You know, um, just how Marcus Garvey and W.E. Du Bois and everyone else throughout the world was inspired by Haiti and his Pan-Africanism stance. And... One thing we have to understand why Haiti is, is not, you know, a shining example is because European powers feel like they must destroy the image of Haiti and Pan-African Union, right, to, to, to uh, make Africans be submissive and subservient to them. So they always must destroy anything that is a shining beacon of light and freedom, okay? So this is what we must understand as African people. I love the way that he touched on uh, Mankandal in the movie, how he spoke about how... Um, you know, uh, we were using plants for poison, to poison the collaborators, you know, or the coons that we call them today. So, you know, I just want to give a brief story about Haiti. A lot of things that were left out about Haiti, a lot of things that people may not understand or may not, you know, have um, seen in the movie. Um, a good book to read about that would be this book right here, The Black Jacobins, which is a very good book um, for children. You have uh, this story right here, my candle. You know, where it talks about some of the things that he did. And, you know, overall, the documentary was good. I definitely enjoyed it. Like I said, I ordered my copy. So it should be here sometime in November. I suggest everybody see it and look at it from a Pan-African standpoint on how Haiti and Haiti's people have went around the world systematically trying to make everyone equal and free. And this is why Haiti and Ethiopia is in the situation that it is in today because European powers do not want to see Haiti or any African republic ever be self-sufficient as people. Okay, so until then, next fam until next time, family, think black, love black, stay black, support black, and that's real black power.